Welcome to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and there's many names that come to mind when you think of the Battle of Gettysburg. Pickett, Hancock, Meade, McClaws, Longstreet, but today I want to talk about General John Bell Hood. His attack against Little Round Top is one of the more pivotal moments in the Battle of Gettysburg. And so I thought it would be great to hear his personal account of what happened that day on July 2nd, 1863. In 1875, General James Longstreet, who had kind of been outcast by many of the former Confederates because he had switched political parties, reached out to John Bell Hood and wanted his account of what happened at Gettysburg. And so I want to read you the letter that Hood sent back to Longstreet describing what the battle was like for him. I arrived with my staff in front of the heights of Gettysburg shortly after daybreak, as I have already stated, on the morning of the 2nd of July. My division soon commenced filing into an open field near me, where the troops were allowed to stack arms and rest until further orders. A short distance in advance of this point, and during the early part of that same morning, we were in both engaged in company with Generals Lee and A.P. Hill in observing the position of the Federals. General Lee, with coat buttoned to the throat, saber belt buckled around the waist, and the field glasses pending at his side, walked up and down in the shade of large trees near us, halting now and then to observe the enemy. He seemed full of hope, yet at times buried in deep thought. Colonel Fremantle of England was ensconced in the forks of a tree not far off, with the glass in constant use examining the lofty position of the Federal Army. General Lee was seemingly anxious you should attack that morning, he remarked to me. The enemy is here, and if we do not whip him, he will whip us. You thought it better to await the arrival of Pickett's division at that time still in the rear in order to make the attack, and you said to me subsequently, whilst we were seated together near the trunk of a tree, the general is a little nervous this morning. He wishes me to attack. I do not wish to do so without Pickett. I never like to go into battle with one boot off. Thus passed the forenoon of that eventful day, when in the afternoon about three o'clock it was decided to no longer await Pickett's division, but to proceed to our extreme right and attack up the Emmitsburg Road. The claws moved off, and I followed with my division. In a short time I was ordered to quicken the march of my troops and to pass to the front of the claws. This moment was accomplished by throwing out an advanced force to tear down fences and clear the way. The instructions I received were to place my division across the Emmitsburg Road, form line of battle, and attack. Before reaching this road, however, I sent forward some of my picked Texas scouts to ascertain the position of the enemy's extreme left flank. They soon reported to me that it rested upon Round Top Mountain, that the country was open, and that I could march through an open woodland pasture around Round Top and assault the enemy in flank and rear, that their wagon trains were packed in rear of their line, and were badly exposed to our attack in that direction. As soon as I arrived upon the Emmitsburg Road, I placed one or two batteries in position and opened fire. A reply from the enemy's guns soon developed his lines. His left rested on or near Round Top, with line bending back and again forward, forming, as it were, a concave line as approached by the Emmitsburg Road. A considerable body of troops was posted in front of the main line between the Emmitsburg Road and Round Top Mountain. This force was in line of battle upon an eminence near a peach orchard. I found that in making the attack according to orders up the Emmitsburg Road, I should have first encounter and drive off this advanced line of battle. Secondly, at the base and along the slope of the mountain to confront immense boulders of stone so massed together as to form narrow openings which would break our ranks and cause the men to scatter whilst climbing up the rocky precipice. I found, moreover, that my division would be exposed to a heavy fire from the main line of the enemy in position on the crest of the high range, of which Round Top was the extreme left, and by reason of the concavity of the enemy main line, that we would be subject to a destructive fire in flank and rear, as well as in front and deemed it almost an impossibility to clamber along the boulders up this steep and rugged mountain, and under this number of crossfires put the enemy to flight. I knew that if the feat was accomplished it must be at most fearful sacrifice, 
of as brave and gallant soldiers as ever engaged in battle. The reconnaissance of my Texas scouts and the development of the federal lines were effective in a very short space of time. In truth, shorter than I have taken to recall and jot down these facts. Although the scenes and events of that day are as clear to my mind as if the great battle had been fought yesterday. I was in possession of these important facts so shortly after reaching the Emmitsburg Road that I considered it my duty to report to you at once my opinion that it was unwise to attack up the Emmitsburg Road as ordered and to urge that you follow me to turn round top and to urge that you allow me to turn round top and attack the enemy in flank and rear. Accordingly, I dispatched a staff officer bearing to you my request to be allowed to make the proposed movement on account of the above stated reasons. Your reply was quickly received. General Lee's orders are to attack up the Emmitsburg Road. I sent another officer to say that I feared nothing could be accomplished by such an attack and renewed my request to turn round top. Again, your answer was, General Lee's orders are to attack up the Emmitsburg Road. During this interim, I had continued the use of the batteries upon the enemy and had become more and more convinced that the Federal line extended to Round Top and that I could not reasonably hope to accomplish much by the attack as ordered. In fact, it seems to me the enemy occupied a position by nature so strong, I may say impregnable, that independently of their flank fire, they could easily repel our attack by merely throwing and rolling rocks down the mountainside as we approached. A third time I dispatched one of my staff officers to explain fully in regard to the situation and suggest that you had better come and look for yourself. I selected in this instance my adjutant general, Colonel Harry Sellers, whom you know to be not only an officer of great courage, but also of marked ability. Colonel Sellers returned with the same message. General Lee's orders are to attack up the Emmitsburg Road. Almost simultaneously, Colonel Fairfax of your staff rode up and repeated the above orders. After this urgent protest against entering the Battle of Gettysburg, according to instructions, which protest is the first and only one I ever made during my entire military career, I ordered my line to advance and make the assault. As my troops were moving forward, you rode up in person. A brief conversation passed between us, during which I again expressed the fears above mentioned and regret at not being allowed to attack and flank around Round Top. You answered to this effect we must obey the orders of General Lee. I then rode forward with my line under a heavy fire. In about twenty minutes after reaching the Peach Orchard, I was severely wounded in the arm and borne from the field. With this wound terminated my participation in this great battle. As I was borne off on a litter to the rear, I could but experience deep distress of mind and heart at the thought of the inevitable fate of my brave fellow soldiers, who formed one of the grandest divisions of that world-renowned army, and I shall ever believe that had I been permitted to turn Round Top Mountain, we would not only have gained that position, but have been able to finally to rout the enemy. I am respectably yours, J.B. Hood. John Bell Hood is one of the more famous generals that I love to read about. He is a fascinating character in history, and I hope to do more videos on him to kind of get into his own personal life as well. But his attack at Gettysburg is still famed today. People know the Devil's Den and Little Round Top. Those attacks that happened there are some of the more bloody episodes of the entire Civil War. But getting Hood's personal account of the day is very intriguing. Of course, this is 10 years after the war, can you really completely believe everything he said, that he remembered it exactly the way it happened? Uh, people's memory fades, and so it's not like he wrote it down right after the battle. But still, it's a very fascinating letter that John Bell Hood has wrote to General James Longstreet. It wouldn't be too much longer, about four more years, and John Bell Hood would pass away in New Orleans. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast doing this video. And until next time, have a nice day.